This is my handsome little Derek. Ten wall little Derek. Mr. Beef ain't never squashed in the flesh. This is Derek. You know he's doing his little stunt thing. Mm -hmm. Did Derek used to run with Birdman a lot? Mm -hmm. Yes, he did run with him a lot. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody know him? No, I mean he was crazy about him. He idolized me. great baby, you know. He he gave him the respect. He called himself the number one stunner. Derek called himself the number two stunner. Yeah. Most people tell me Derek a number one stunner. We were never really interested in dropping full lane interviews until I realized there's a lot of information and stories that's being cut out during the editing process. So we decided to start uploading some of them in their entirety, starting with the full version of Miss Dorothy Harris, who is the mother to the legendary BG Derrick and blood sisters to the music moguls Birdman and Slim. If there's any full versions you would like to see, leave them in the comments and we'll upload them. Tell them who you are. I'm Dorothy Harris. I'm the mother of Derrick or uh, Derrick Williams. The original Mr. Beef ain't never squash and Mighty Lee, Delvin Harris. Okay, that's what it is. My uh, latest son. <laughs> uh, so we talk about um, what, what, how, how did this interview come about? What, what made you decide? Well, I hear a lot of, I hear a lot of talk about Derek Dead, and, and you know, I, I go on YouTube a lot, and I, I, I uh, look at the reviews and all this. I've been telling Delvin that I want to do my own interview. Okay. And so since he's been dead since 2002, I never done my own. And I tell people that I'm gonna do my own, but I never got around to doing it because I took sick with cancer and everything. So my son tells me, well, I got a hook up for you to do your interview now, so. That works. I mean, that's beautiful. And I, I appreciate you just choosing us to, uh, to, to bring it to life, so. Thank you really. for coming out. No problem, thank you for having us. Uh, let, so we start at the beginning. We'll, we'll start, uh, um, when Derek was a little boy, mm -hmm. you describe him as a, as, a, as a child before you know kindergarten. Derek uh, was a little boy. He was always not a, not a quiet uh, person. He was always an outgoing person, very outspoken. And, and really, I'm I'm glad he was like that. I, I raised though Derek to speak his mind because I was a quiet and shy person coming up, and I didn't want my children to be the same way as I was. So. He was always a fun loving, loved to joke and loved to clown around outgoing type of person. As he got older, he, he grades drop, he got with friends, you know, you start doing things differently. Mm -hmm. So he was well known, but he also liked the clown. I mean, when Derek was at Live Oak, I had to go to school for Derek one time. And the teacher told me, Miss Severin told me, she said, Derek, tell your mommy, you know, she said, did you know your son he have seizures? <laughs> seizures? He said, yeah, Derek, tell your mama you had seizures. Derek actually sniffing his body, laid down on that floor, and started shaking like he really had a seizure. <laughs> so he was a jokester. He was, wow. <laughs> he was a jokester. He would do that to get out of class? I guess to get he on just, the teacher's nerves and stuff. Uh, but they loved him. Okay. They well, all loved him. A uh, uh, big misunderstanding about what he was, he would get the choices between the Magnolia and the St. Thomas. What, what was he raised? Derek actually never lived in no project. He was raised in a tent wall, but he hung in the project so often, and I mean that was his life. He loved the, he loved the same time. He loved the tent wall, but he hung out there so much. People actually thought he lived in the project. I have never lived in a project in my life. Was was he uh, were you a single parent with Dirk? At one point in time, I were after me and my husband separated. I became a single parent, but we I mean when he was younger, coming up, I'm like. Mm. He was still in love with, I think, when I became a single parent, so okay. he probably was about 12 or 13, something like that. And that's what I was about to bring it to, the, the 12, 13, up until like a 15-year-old Derek. Yeah, because that, that kind of made a difference, the separation and everything. What, what was it that drew him to the project so much? Friends well, when, when, yeah, when you go into school, at, from from uh, Jackson, Andrew Jackson to Live Oak, most of the people were out the same time as Project. So that's where he met his friends at, and that's where he fell in love with him, you know. And then all of them, all of them loved him. I mean, when you was playing ball with Annunciation Park, it was mostly people from the St. Thomas Project, you know. Okay. What, what bring him to the St. Thomas? I mean, uh, to the uh, Magnolia Project? I think as Derek got older, he started dealing with those projects. And by then, I mean, Derek went in any project. He didn't have no project that he couldn't go into. Mm. If if they had to explain him at the time, like if the if the streets had to explain him and say who he was, how, how would they explain him? 
A lot of people are gonna say he was loving and he he cared about other people, you know. And if he was down and he can do something for you, he he do it he can, wherever he can. Then you are gonna have your haters, you know. You got your, your haters coming with the with the territory there. Or oh, he wasn't this and he wasn't that. But I have had so many people to tell me the love that he didn't show them that that you know you don't hear out here when you hear them talk about him. And I had people to tell me how he stood up in their defense, you know, when somebody else was doing them something, you know. Yeah, me uh, doing a lot of interviews, and I, I asked people about him. I got a lot of stories that I didn't expect to get, but right. that's, that's that's exactly what they would say. Right. Yeah, it's a lot of love. If you, if you, and I know it's kind of off the subject, but if, if you had to explain the, the St. Thomas Project at that time, I mean, how was it? Right then, I think it was like, if you wasn't from the hood, you didn't go to the hood. Okay. You know, but it, it was still, people shared love with one another, but it was like, if this wasn't your area, you didn't hang out in the St. Thomas, you know. Gotcha. And like I say, with Derek, Derek hung out in any project. I mean, anybody know Derek, he didn't have a project that he couldn't go into. You know? So that's the, we, we bring it up to date and we, we speak about the uh, the artist, Derek, mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, the rapping and stuff. How, how did, uh, like the first thing that, when you realize it's real, like this is real, and he's serious about this, what, what was it that made you realize he, he's gonna, he could actually have a future with this? I think when, before Derek died, he gave, he gave me some music of his, but before then, I mean, people think he came to be an artist with dealing with baby and them and stuff like this here. He's been an artist from a young boy. <clears throat> he met Indian as a, a young boy, like nine and 10 years old. And that's where his artistry first began, because when you mess an Indian, and if you know anything about the New Orleans Indian, you're talking a lot of jibber jab to one another. Y'all talking a lot of trash to one another. And you stand, in, and this a, this a boy, but he going for some grown men. You know, you, yeah, you know, he made that name out there running his, running his mouth. So a lot of people think, oh, when he got with Cash Money, Baby and them and stuff like that, which are his uncles, you know, that's where his name picked up. No, his name was out there way before then, yeah, you know. This picture up here was the last concert Derek did in New Orleans. And I'm trying to think what that was at the warehouse or something, I think it was. But that was the last picture he did, the last concert. And you can see the jaw on his face that he took, somebody took mm -hmm. that while he was on the scene. He had a neck of chew and a straw. He loved to chew straws. As a matter of fact, when he died, he had a straw. They gave me a straw where he had been chewing on the straw. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing with his music and a lot of people get it twisted. That I saw. So I know Birdman got to be looking up for him, right? Uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of people get that twisted. But Derek was priding himself on doing it himself. You know, that's right. that's that's the story from other people that right. I get. So right. if we could if we could elaborate on that, and I mean, did did, did Birdman ever play a, ro a role in his life as far as uh, music? I mean, I think. The, the the fact that he would tell him I'm gonna put it put you put you up on your feet and I'm gonna tell you and I'm not knocking nobody because that is my brother we wasn't raised together but we all know each other as family and if I'm a, if I'm gonna say it I have to be honest about how I feel about it and stuff like this here now Derek Derek had nothing but high respect for baby he 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 idolized baby and stuff like this here. And when he told him as young they were gonna put him on his feet, you know, I think that gave him that extra drive that made him go at it even harder to be a rapper and stuff like that, that he put in more work than he he already had it in him. But that, that gave him that drive, that passion, even more passion that one day people gonna see him because he always say, I'm gonna be a star, I'm gonna make you know, I'm gonna make it big, I'm gonna buy you a house next to Oprah. That was his little thing, you know, to me and stuff like that there. But at that same token, he was given false hope because you didn't do anything for him, you know. So I just feel like, you know, you, you fed him a dream, but you didn't do anything for him as family. Or, or, or not just as family, as a good artist, because he's a damn good artist, you know. And, and So Derek did decide to uh, just, uh, choose to be a, wanted to be a part of Cash Money as far as artists and things. And right. He uh, he did, and I I mean I hear all kind of stories with that there, and I'm not gonna get into I'm not gonna get deep into this here because I mean the stories I hear sometimes it, it aggravates because a dead man can't speak, but I know I'm no deeper than what they're saying, but I'm not gonna I'm not I'm not gonna get in there because I'm not I'm not trying to trash nobody's name and nothing like that, so I'm gonna leave that one alone, but uh. The, the 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 stories they tell, they need they, they some people they should read the books before they you know before they get out here and 
be saying things out their mouth that they don't know what they be saying and stuff, you know. And a lot of times when I hear stuff like, oh, he was a bully, he did this and he did that. Well, the people called him a bully. You ran with him. What were you? Hmm. <laughs> you know. You in the street? You know? Right. You you know? You know, so so I, I hear all kind of stories about that, uh, but I know one thing. Had Derek been alive today, he was going to make it with or without you know, without my brother and him. He was gonna make it. That beef ain't never scorched. I mean, I don't I don't condone violence, but that's a true song. That's a song for life. And that's for anybody out there in them streets or anywhere. I mean right you, you, you don't you don't take that song for granted because that's the life they live in, you know. You know, and you thinking everything cool. It's not cool because in their heart they just waiting for that right moment. And I don't care how bad somebody say you are or whatever. I mean, my child dead today. Y'all say he was this and he was that, but he dead today. Somebody got him, you know. There's always somebody out here trying to outsmart you. So when he sung that song, that was one hell of a song he made, and that's a legendary song, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, and he still I create that legend. That, right. That's a legend of day. You know? Right. But it, it's, it's that song, but it's a lot of songs. It's pretty much his, who he was, you know. Right, and Him right. speaking on, you know. Orientating the world on how it really goes. So yeah, because let me say, Derek is Derek was a person. If you show Derek love, he gonna show you love. Now, if you try to play game on him, he gonna treat you as it is. And that's the same thing with anything, you know. I'm not gonna sit up here and waste my time with nobody trying to play game on me, you know. Game recognize game, mm -hmm. and that and that's how it is with the streets, you know. Even if you're not in the streets, you got any kind of intelligence, game recognize game. A man gonna respect another man, right. you know. Did Derek, did Derek ever do any jail time? Oh yeah, oh yeah. What, 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 what did you go to jail for? What, what, uh, 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 how old was he when the first time he went to jail? Hmm, Derek went to jail and shit before he got killed. <laughs> so he got killed at 21, so I guess that was about 20 years old, something like that. And I think he got caught with drugs like that part of time, a little minor stuff. Another thing was an old railroad charge. They was trying to get him with the police. He ran from the police and they didn't catch him. I think his somebody called got in. But anyway, they tried to put a charge on him like it's attempted on the police life and stuff like that. So with that being said, I feel like when my child laid out there dead, nobody cared about his life because all you got to do is get a record against you and the police. And you just another black man laying out there dead, you know. You ain't trying to really find out what happened to him. You know, he's just a cold case today. But in my heart, it's still a hole in my heart. It's going to always be there because that's my child. I love him to death, you know. So they haven't found any motives or anything? You know, and you, you, you never really tried to, you know. We got Derek with the footprints in the sand. And this was one of his basketball things, yeah. Next to him, we got the mighty soldier Slim up here. Maybe there is soldier Slim. To me, Derek and Soldier Slim was like the Tupac and the Biggie back then in, in that time and area, you know, because here you got these boys doing this off of tape recorders and all of this here, you know, and it, spitting off the top of their head and things like that there. Yeah. And then Derek is even way younger than Soldier Slim, so there's a young boy coming over here, you know, doing the, doing the thing like that, but not, not afraid to compete against nobody and stuff like that there. Yeah. So I didn't know them. I, I did get to meet well, I knew BG and them, people. Oh, so, I mean, not so just somebody to see if I knew. Young Buck, Twine. I, I, I never knew Young Buck was Young Buck. I knew him as Twine because he came to my house several times from Tennessee, him and a few other guys. And about how, how old was he at the time? Oh, that was young when uh, 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 he was coming there. Well, probably about 16 or something uh, like that. 16 okay. or 17 years yeah. old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he definitely, he, 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 I mean, like I said, Derek started off as a little boy with this music and all this here, and his heart was always in it, and to think that he, I, I could make it one day, his, his thing was, and he, he lived by what he said, I ain't gonna never work for nobody, I'm gonna be on my own, and he never worked on nobody's job. He, he never, because in his heart, he felt like, I'm gonna be a star one day, you know, and he, before he got killed, he was like, mama, you ain't gonna have to work no more. He said, give me a minute. He said, you ain't gonna have to work no more. As soon as my music come out, you know, you're gonna be all right. You ain't gonna have to work no more. Did, did you believe him? Did you feel him? Yeah, I believe him because I knew his heart was in it. And I know that's what he wanted, you know, better for us. Did he have his dad in his life? 
off and on off and on not 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 there on a normal but my ex-husband was more of a of that for the figure i mean he knew his dad he visited his dad but he wasn't like growing up with two parents in the home gotcha. do you see a lot of mighty me in Derek? yes it, it really surprised me because before Derek got killed, Mighty Lee was that little humble church boy, you know. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm going to have one going to be a preacher and one going to be a rapper. And that's how I often. But then when I heard his music after his record, because when Derek got killed, I think, and Mighty Lee Hall was, I got to be the man for my mama now. Even though he was a young boy, he felt like I have to be that man for my mom. And I thank God he has been a great son. He has been an awesome son to me and stuff, you know. Yeah, oh, uh, but oh, uh, I think when I first heard his music, I actually cried because I didn't realize how deep he was. I also didn't realize the pain because I mean I knew he was hurting and I was hurting. He dealt, he was just a seven years old when his brother got killed. They fourteen years apart, and he would just sit at home sometime. And he would he would just listen to his brother music, and he'd have tears rolling on his eyes, and he would just you know, be doing his hand like that. So I got counseling in school for him because I knew this was going to damage my child. My son from then on at seven years old, never in his life went trick or treating another day in his life. He stayed inside. He didn't deal with people. This was Mighty Lee, Halloween night when his brother got murdered. And he actually had a bullet in that same hand when oh, he got killed. He never went to, never did another Halloween in his life. No, I did I, you know, that was the last of us. Do you worry about his safety sometimes? Yes, safe? all the time, because, I mean, not that he got no beef with nobody on the street, on the streets. I mean, the streets is evil now. It's cutthroat, yeah. it, and it's worse than it was back in the 80s, you know. You got the young, young, young children coming up doing murders and stuff like, and you could be jealousy, envy, a female, you know, all of that stuff. Or you, or you just somebody think you really, really got it going on. This bird man nephew, you know, and stuff like this here. Take you, <laughs> take you, and you know, want to do something. Bird man ain't gonna do nothing for us. Ain't, ain't nobody doing nothing for us. So yeah, you have to, you have to worry about that, there, you know. And I did the same thing with Derek, even though the streets wasn't even as bad as it was. Now, if I heard somebody got shot or something like that, I'm gonna get on the phone, hey, son, what's up with you? What's happening? You know, just call him. I'm not letting him know I'm worried about him, but in my heart, I'm worried about him. When I see him come through that door, Mighty Lee, I'm thanking God, you know, because I know my child is safe, you know. I ask God to cover him going in and coming out, and, and that's on a daily, you know. Was, 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 was Derek born at Charity Hospital? No, Derek wasn't even born in New Orleans. Oh, for real? <laughs> I lived in Alexandria, and he was born out there. Okay. So how old was he when you got him to New Orleans? He was a baby. Okay. <laughs> so that's so all he knew. This all New Orleans was all he knew. Yeah. That's well, the small picture of me and my sister, Johnny Me. She has the same daddy also with baby and us. You know, baby and us. So that's my sister, Johnny Me. She named me after our dad. But that's me. That's Johnny Me. That's me. Johnny Me is named after our dad, Johnny. Can we talk about Birdman? Can we talk about what, what it was like growing up? Oh, no, I, oh, you say how often did I see Birdman? We probably got to know each other more with us being grown than, than, than children. Me and my sister Kim was more tighter, and I, me and Slim, but Abe and I was not on the same equal, but Abe was more probably an outgoing person like Derek, just gone all the time when I would go around by the ball by Gladys. Well, most of the time he wasn't even there. Yeah. And you, you say you and Slim was tight though? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm cool with all of them. First, you know, if you see us on, on the street, and I don't, it's no beef. God made y'all my family. You are who you are. You know, I can't change how you feel or anything. Oh. Did Derek used to run with Birdman a lot? Yes. Okay. A lot. Can you say that for me? So proud to Yes, you. he did run with him a lot. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody know him? No, he, I mean, he was crazy about him. He idolized me, Brit baby, you know. He, he gave him the respect. He called himself the number one stunner. Derek called himself the number two stunner. Yeah. Most people tell me Derek a number one stunner. <laughs> you know, I have so many people that say that to me, and it it, it amazes me. You know the stories that people tell. I didn't have a stranger found out I was Derek mommy and was excited and telling me a story that they had encounter with Derek. And but you know you hear all this bad talk. Well, what happened to these people? You know, cause uh. 
somebody always got something negative to say, you know. And and, and the thing is, like I said, it gets me. I hear stories that when Derek alive, none of these ain't stories. They haven't popped up now. Nah, he dead. He can't speak for himself. All kind of stuff come out the woodwork. But y'all come out with that down, you know. Everybody know a dead man can't speak. So you say what you want to say. That's a one-sided story. Yeah, you could be lying. You right. Know, you know, right. Him, so. That's real. Is that, uh, what, what would you say is one of your fondest memories? <laughs> My fondest memory of Derry is him always being jolly. Him, him always, <laughs> he got a nagger. Yeah, he likes to rib. He likes to rib. And like I said, that come up a part of Live Oak School and the young children around there from the same time. If you didn't know how to talk trash, you didn't know how to rib, don't come at nobody. Derek loved the real, he loved the dress, he loved to walk around looking at his feet, but he would make you so mad with mad with him. Then he wanna laugh and make up with you. You know, after he done really, really pissed you out and got to that nerve with you, then he gonna make it, then he gonna laugh. And I, I, I love that about him because he could get on my nerves as his mama and stuff like this. And I love the fact that his heart was in his music and it started so young and he would, like I said, he would get in there, he just beat those drums, and I just love to see his hand, how, how he would do it. And when I see Nick Cannon on drum line, that attitude Nick Cannon had, the way he beat those drums, but Derek could read music, Nick Cannon probably could read music too, no disrespect, Nick Cannon. <laughs> but uh, he, he, he was good, he was great at it. And his band teacher, Mr. Watkins, used to always tell me, said, Derek Stennis, he could get a scholarship to college just for his band, you know. And I, lo I love that about him. I, I love Did that. he ever consider college? No. no. The only thing Derek wanted to do is make it big in that rap world. Once he, you know, he figured he could, he, he, he had, you know, he had the potential and it was in his heart to do it and he could spit game and, you know, that's all he felt like, I'm going to make it. And he, and he, he was right, he was going to make it. You did, know? He have, did he have a voice, his opinion on the fact that, uh, Maybe you felt like Birdman was dodging him? Or? Next question. Gotcha. Anything, anything, you know, anything? I, have, I have seen Derek, oh, uh, my neighbors, and, and the female was wrong. She was wrong. And she was fighting with her man. You know, my, my son actually wanted to go out there and take her calls and stuff like this. And I didn't see him with a boy disrespecting his mom or we were seeing on Chippewa. He wanted to go down and know son. But I don't want you hanging with him and stuff like that. Because if you disrespect your mama, you will try to do it to me. And things don't turn out the same when I'm not your mom and stuff like that. Yeah. So I know he was staying up for people and for what was right with somebody and stuff like this. And then he, I love when Derek was in jail and Mighty Lee and I went to see him. He was like, like I say, seven, six years old, something like that. And Derek liked the clown, and everybody back there loved Derek, and even locked up, they loved Derek back there and stuff. So I love where he loved the clown, but I love how he took the moment to pull those curtains back and tell his brother, brother, don't you never come back here. This is no place to be. He said, don't you never come back there. He loved the clown, but he took that time off to stop and say, this is no place to be, brother, don't you never come back here. And I love that about him, you know, because... He wanted his brother to be different. He wanted his brother to make it in life. And when he would write me, he would tell me, you know, tell my brother, I say, stay strong, stay prayed up, you know, do good in school. And he did do good in school. He, you know, he did stay strong and stuff. How, how long did Derek do in jail? Derek, what was, probably almost a year. Okay. It was a, Derek probably had more problem with tickets than anything. Derek get, get traffic tickets. <laughs> And Derry died, and all they sent me a paper saying from all uh, what is Paris Prison, I think it was, that they had money down there for Derry. I should have known better, so I'll go down there to pick Derry money up and say he had money in his account. And people told me, Ma'am, where's Derek? I said, He's deceased. She said, I'm sorry. She said, You have my condolences. She said, But I was gonna lock your son up. He, mm -hmm. <laughs> he wow. had so many traffic tickets that he wow. ain't worried about paying. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, but that was the thing, that he just was, like, was a character. And when he died, I mean, I joked about we were going to need the Superdome. We didn't need the Superdome, but I would say the Municipal Auditorium, something like that, would, would have been more sufficient than me using Rose because, Rose Funeral, because it was so packed up in there. 
a lot of people didn't get to even see the body because the fire department came in there to shut the uh, funeral down because it was too much, too many people for that capacity in Rose Funeral Home. And the love was real. I mean, I didn't put his pictures out with his uh, for shirts until I think the, the night before, two nights before. They had so many people had got those shirts from Nucky and from King's Fashion and stuff like this. Yeah. You had deputies down there, police. I mean, you, he, he had so many people in the court system that came out and showed love and stuff like this. Bell bondsmen and everything. Rufus Bell bombing showed mad love. They brought nothing but, I think, six big old long ice chests full of stuff in there and stuff. And you, and you talk about the, the, the love and how, how his energy spread out through the people. You know? Right, right. And I was kind of like, even in jail, you know, I like affect people. Today in jail, his his name still rang in jail and stuff it's like a lot that. Of, usually like that sometimes. Yes, yeah. yeah. I don't know if he really knew the love that you know people had before he died, but I was um, amazed at his funeral when I look back and we even had the hearse and carriage and everything. I mean, the streets just was packed. He 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 you, really. You have a second line. He had the second line and and uh, yeah, the hearse and carriage, but uh. It was just packed, and when I look back and, and think, I'm, I'm like, I hope he knew in life the love he had in debt, you know, because we, we said give us a, give, give me my flowers while I'm living. That is so true, you know, because you don't want to you don't want a person to be gone for the to look back and see all this love. I think it was it was big in my mind when she said I just want to go through my neighborhood one more time when all. Uh, Biggie, uh, when 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 Biggie died, uh, I, don't, I don't think it was, it was yeah, it was Biggie, it wasn't Tupac, Mama. And you seen all these people all around, and that's the same love I feel when I, I when I think about Derek. When I look back and I look at all these people and all the love and support, you know, that came out for him, it it just was amazing. I, it was something that I wasn't looking for. You know, I knew his name was Big, but I wasn't looking for it like that. I just want to say to everybody who, who see this, even especially the youngsters out here living in this world, and for all the hurt mothers like myself, you know, when you out there on those streets and you're taking a life, you have to think about it. You didn't just take Derek's life, you took a part of me, you took a part of my baby with you, you know. And I, I heard every day, but it's, it's certain times, holidays, birthday comes, you don't never know how you're going to be. Some days you cry, cry, cry. And you just want that day to be over with. And some days you just laugh and you just go by the memories. You play that music all day long or whatever you have, whatever memories you have with that, that person. But when you're out there in that world, you know, thank me for you pull a trigger. Because once you take that life, it's no coming back to that. I can't get my son back, you know. It's, they left a hole in my heart. They left a hole in my heart that can't no human being repair, you know, can't nobody. God has blessed me to be able to maintain, maintain because I don't drink, I don't drug, I never have, and never in my oh, 59 years. So everything I deal with every day, I had to deal with a sober heart and mind. It was nothing but the grace of God that got me through this year, you know. But you got another mom out there who may not deal with that the same way, you know. You got another mama who may drink, who may drug, you know, who may just grieve, just grieve herself to death because her child is gone. because. That's not no easy thing to deal with. And that that song is a, a, a song, like I say, it's a legendary song. It's a true song. It may sound shitty to some people, but it's shitty, but it's clean. Excuse my French, you know. And when you out there thinking that this person has forgot about what you're going through, you're not telling nobody to kill nobody, but if you can get away from that foolishness, get away from it because Beef is never over with, you know, it's never spoiled. It do die down sometime, and it's, it's the truth, and that's, that's the most truthful song he could have ever made in his life, you know. So, to me, to me, it's like, we need to think before we decide to pull a trigger. You cannot give me my life back. You cannot give me my child life back. And, what it is, 20, 21, 20, 19 years, still feel like yesterday, you know. So, oh, what is 19 or 20 years, but it still feel like yesterday. I, I can picture that same pain as of yesterday, like it just happened to you. And it don't get better when time go on, but you do learn to live through that pain. But people say, well, give it time, it's going to get better. No, it's not going to get better, but God enables you to live through it. So when, when they think about it, just think about it as a family. 
Let me tell you something about this rock here. Oh. Mm. Der Derek went on a Boy Scout trip as a little boy. It must have been about eight or nine years old with Miss Maury Wall in New Orleans. The Ten Wall Swag must pass them. And I told him to bring me a souvenir bag. And he brought me this here. And I have kept this all the time. It looked like a piece of wood, but you you can you can feel it. Oh, wow. Look, just, just it's a stone, huh? Yes. Uh, this is what he chose to bring me for a souvenir back and I thought that was the most beautiful thing. And he wrote on it? I, I wrote on it. Uh, okay. But when Hurricane Katrina came for some reason, I grabbed my rock. Mm -hmm. And not knowing that I'm not going to never go back home, mm -hmm. but I, I grabbed this here and I, and I love it. It just tell me that he was building his house on rock all the while and not on sand, you know, to, mm -hmm. to give something like this here, this nature. He handled the business like a man. Matter you know fact, what I'm saying? He always... You know what I'm saying? You talking about Derek? I'm about to tell you this tree. This tree, this tree in the same spot. Some real shit. Look, come walk Matter in the street. Fact, look, I'm going to show you that tree. This tree. When Derek pulled it, he was in the Corvette. i never forget. He was in the Corvette. You hear me? I just come on from doing doing the juvenile jokes. He like, damn, fat, you walking out. I said, man, I just come home. I'm hurt, man. He said, man, meet me tomorrow before you go to school. Meet me right here. It's the same tree right here. It's the same tree. I ain't with it. He come out, he got out the car right till he walked out. He had a big old gun on him. Dick on that bitch, you hear me? Come right here. He said, man, I'm going to bless your game. I ain't got nothing but good shit to say about me. Ain't nobody who say otherwise, they hate, man. Tell me you talking about again. BG Derrick, you hear me? Real talk, dude, dude. That really was the bird man to me. You feel me? No disrespect to the big bird man, but that was the bird man right there. He, he have a lot of niggas. That was like the name we well deserved. Yeah, man, he helped. He helped a lot of folks. Thank you, Big Dog. He helped a lot of folks with real talk, man. I don't want to take too much of the time, but right till we came up, this used to be a cut right here. This used to be a cut. We used to come out, come out the cut through the store. This used to be a wall. We made a lot of money right till. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace, Mr. Old, Mr. On John, stood on the end right here. Everybody used to help and take care of him right here to the store. When the whole project shut down. I'm already off this side. Everybody had to, who was on that side came over here. Yeah. Who was he? Huh? You said you did Mr. Johnny. Yeah, OG, real. He was OG. He had respect. Nobody never played no guys, man. Always respected. Real talk.